Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna have a look at this electric power steering that I have removed from a Nissan. So first of all, here on the electric power steering itself, we're gonna have a look at the components and how electric power steering works. And later on at the end of this video, I'm gonna explain everything regarding the wiring diagram and also diagnosis on each wire. Because of course this is electric power steering, you see many connectors right here. You need to know what you should expect when you are performing any diagnostic on the electric power steering. Before starting the video, if you guys haven't subscribed the channel yet, please consider subscribing to get the notification when we upload new videos. So first of all, as you see on this car, electric power steering is mounted on the steering column. So you may have three main different designs of electric power steering for the location. On many cars, electric power steering is located on the steering column. We may have this assembly on the steering pinion or on the steering rack. So it's really based on the size of the car and how much torque we are expecting from electric power steering itself. But this is actually one of the most common designs for mid-sized vehicles. So basically when you turn the steering wheel, there should be a mechanism inside the electric power steering to detect the steering rotation and the torque. And then EPS control unit should decide how much assist should be provided in that case. Let's have a look at the components first. So right here, we have the steering column. So this is the main input shaft, which goes through the steering assembly. So this is the input. And here this side goes to the steering pinion. So you have the rack after here. So if I show you the components like this, this part is EPS control unit, and this is the EPS motor. So this is the final components to assist the electric power steering. But for EPS control unit to decide how much current should be provided on this actuator, we need to provide some important information. So if you look at here, the first component right here at the top is called torque sensor. So this torque sensor is mounted at the top and this is the first component receiving the information from the steering wheel. So it means if driver turns the steering wheel, this torque sensor is responsible to measure the torque on the steering system. On some electric power steering systems, we have a torque sensor and a steering angle sensor in one assembly right here. On many others, we have the torque sensor here and a steering angle sensor is behind the steering wheel. So when you check the wiring diagram, you can find out if this one is only the torque sensor or steering angle sensor is located right here as well. So basically what happens when you turn the steering wheel, this torque sensor at the top is gonna to detect the amount of torque on a steering wheel. How? Because generally inside this assembly, we have a torsion bar as well, just like the torsion bar that we have on hydraulic power steering, inside the pinion, inside the rotary valve, we have a torsion bar here as well because when you want to turn the steering wheel, you have some resistance on here coming from the wheel. All right, so you have some resistance in here. When you turn the steering wheel from the top, that torsion bar inside the torque sensor assembly is gonna get distorted, but not too much. That distortion is gonna be something less than 10 degrees, generally around uh, seven or eight degrees that you can read it with a scan tool as well. So generally by having that torsion bar twisted, we are giving the proper signal to the torque sensor. So torque sensor is gonna measure how much torque is already applied on the steering wheel and in what direction. And it will send the information from here. So this wiring that you see is gonna take the information to the electric power steering control unit that I showed you earlier. Torque sensor inside the EPS can be optical type or magnetic type. We had the optical type on the very early generation, but mostly on many cars, they are using magnetic type these days. And information from the torque sensor will be transferred to the EPS control unit. So right now that this control unit has the information, 
regarding the torque on the steering wheel and the steering angle as well. It should provide the required current on the EPS motor to assist the steering system. But that information that we have already is not enough for make a proper decision for this control unit because providing the assist on the steering system depends on some other factors as well. Like when you are driving, vehicle speed is really important because when you drive at low speed or when you are trying to turn the steering wheel at a stationary position, you need a really soft and sharp steering system. So it means the steering system should provide high assist at low speed or at stationary position. But when you drive at higher speed, the steering system must be more firm, otherwise you will lose the control of the car. So based on the vehicle speed, this control unit will decide how much torque this actuator, this motor should provide. Some other information like the engine RPM is really important for this control unit too. So those information will be received, will be delivered to this control unit through CAN bus. So on these connectors that you see here that I will explain shortly on the wind diagram, you have two wires of high speed CAN and engine speed, vehicle speed from the engine control module and ABS control module will be transferred to this control unit through the CAN bus. And based on all those factors, this control unit provides the required current on this motor and this motor can assist the driver because right on this side as you see when the motor operates there is a shaft in here with a warm gear when that warm gear rotates it's going to rotate it's going to rotate another gear right here to rotate the output shaft so we have a gear reduction here as well for increasing the output torque of electric power steering between the warm gear and the warm wheel if anything happens to the electric power steering we will still have the mechanical steering because as I mentioned this side of the shaft is connected to the other side but in between we have a torsion bar for activating the torque sensor so it means if torque sensor doesn't work or if there is anything wrong on the electric power steering which is not assisting anymore when you keep rotating the steering wheel you're going to rotate the output shaft and of course you can turn the steering wheel and move the rack to the left or to the right you may have different type of faults on electric power steering, on the torque sensor, on electric power steering control unit itself that I'm going to explain very shortly. One of the very common problems is on this electric motor. Sometimes problem is from a malfunctioning EPS motor or sometimes the coupling inside is broken. But that coupling could come in different designs. On some cars, it's more likely to have some damages on the coupling because of the design and the material of the coupling, like what you see right now on the screen. On some other models like this one, they are more durable. So I'm going to remove the motor right now so you see how it works. Okay. So this is the EPS motor. As you see, it's for the Nissan. So here's actually the connection between the motor and warm gear. So we have actually this coupling right here, which is more durable compared to what I showed you earlier. This one is going to last longer compared to the other types, which is actually one of the benefits of this type of electric power steering. But of course, if something happens to the motor itself, it's really easy to take it out and uh, replace it. Uh, another problem that you may have on electric power steering is sometimes when you feel the EPS a little firm for a short period of time. Because you need to consider that this is electric motor. So if you keep rotating the steering wheel to the left or to the right, there is a chance that this electric motor is going to get overheated. So this control unit can calculate the temperature of EPS by considering the running time of it. On some models, we used to have one temperature sensor on the EPS itself and it was measuring the temperature of the motor with some compensation because it was not installed directly on the EPS motor but on many others instead of having the temperature sensor this control unit calculate the temperature of this motor by considering its running time so it means if motor is running all the time because you are making the turns too much there's a chance that this one is going to get overheated so in that case, EPS control unit will decrease the current on this motor 
to protect it from overheating. In that case, if you check the EPS with the scan tool, you see the motor actual current is less than the target current. So it means EPS is protecting the EPS motor by decreasing the current on the motor. So in that case, there is nothing wrong on the car. You just need to give some time to the EPS to cool down and then it's gonna be back to normal. Let's go for having a look at the wiring diagram. I will show you the diagram and after understanding the diagram and all these wires, I'm gonna give you some ideas about the troubleshooting on all these wiring, what sort of voltages you should expect on each one of them. So we already sold all the components. I explained how EPS works and how those components work together. So we can locate them right now here on the screen. So the first component as you see right now here is EPS control unit. This one is EPS motor. I have torque sensor right here. As you remember, we had four wires on the torque sensor on that model that I showed you. We have two power supply on the EPS control module. One is ignition switch, 10 amp fuse. And the other one is one high amp fuse, 60 amp fuse on the EPS. And this one is ground. Of course, EPS needs this low amp fuse for the control module and this high amp fuse is needed for EPS motor operation. So it means if any of these two fuses are broken, you won't have EPS working anymore. Same story for this ground. EPS motor is connected to the EPS control unit with two wires. On torque sensor, we have four wires. That very shortly I will explain what you should expect on this wiring as well. And these two wires are actually the CAN bus because EPS control unit communicates with other control modules like engine and ABS. It needs to be connected to the high speed CAN to receive the information in real time. So these two are actually connected to the high speed CAN. So basically it's just like this. When you turn the steering wheel, torque sensor detects the torque on the steering wheel after having the torsion bar distorted. Torque sensor generates the signal. It sends the information to the EPS. EPS control unit receives some other information like the engine RPM and vehicle speed through the high speed CAN. And after considering all those conditions, it's gonna operate the EPS motor through these two cables. But let's see how we can diagnose the EPS control unit and what we can expect on these wirings in case of having any fault. So what you see is actually a part of the workshop manual for this specific case. So for example, you see on the torque sensor, we have four wires in here on the torque sensor. So on this pin number four, when engine runs, you should expect these two values. When engine is running, but you are not turning the steering wheel, you should expect 2.5 volts. But when you turn the steering wheel, you should expect this value. The value changes between 1.7 to 3.3 volts, according to the direction to the left or to the right. On pin number five, which is just right here, this brown wire, this one is actually the torque sensor power supply. On ignition on, you should have eight volt, and on ignition off, you should get zero volt. On torque sensor main wire, this green wire, pin number six, on this one, again, like pin number four, if engine runs and a steering wheel is not rotating, you should get 2.5, and this value when engine is running, but the steering wheel is rotating as well. And of course the last one, pin number seven, this red wire is the ground on the torque sensor, which should be provided all the times. So it means if you have any sort of problem on the torque sensor, because we have some fault codes specifically for the torque sensor, if you have that sort of problem, you can find all these wires and check them one by one. You have the value, everything is mentioned in the workshop manual. These two wires are CAN bus high and CAN bus low for the, for the high speed CAN. Uh, we have another video on the channel. Uh, you can find the link on the description. Uh, of course, the diagnostic on the CAN bus is completely different. And if you have problem on the CAN bus, it might get reflected on other systems too, but you can watch that video anyway. Of course, on the power supply, on this power supply that we have here, this orange wire, on this one, if you have a look, you see ignition switch on or start, it means this fuse provides the power only when ignition switches on or when you are starting the engine. So it means this one is gonna provide the battery voltage on that case. On this red wire here, pin number 17, as you see, we have battery 
voltage all the time. Doesn't really matter if ignition switch is on or off. And the last one is the ground on the EPS control unit, uh, which should be provided all the time. And of course, these two cables on the EPS motor works on the steering rotation and the current that EPS provides on the EPS motor. So as you see, we can check all the wires one by one. So this is one example of this Nissan electric power steering, what you should expect on each one of those wirings. Many other electric power steering on other cars, they are pretty much similar as well. It means if you know how this one works, if you know how to do the troubleshooting on this electric power steering, it's very much close to the other systems as well. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe the channel for getting the notification when we upload new videos.